Uh, it is Thursday. It is. And it's the 4th of June, all day long. And I'm SLP. We are here um, thanks to the kindness uh, of the Public Theater and of Howl Round. Uh, we've been doing this show for 11 years. And uh, now we're doing it like this. We usually do it live. And now we're live, but in a different uh, iteration. Um, so uh, you, what we're going to do is, uh, if those of you who have never been here before, we are going to work together for 20 minutes. And then we're going to talk with you about your work and your creative process. And that's as simple as it gets. Um, it doesn't have to be writing work. It, be, it can be any kind of work. Um, because all rivers flow to the sea, I think. So happy to see all of you here. And if you want to ask a question during the question time, Audrey is going to tell you how to answer, uh, how to ask it. <laughs> I'll tell you how to answer it if you Sorry. want, but it's not going to be very good. Um, hi. Um, thank you all. If you are inside of the Zoom, um, in order to ask a question, all you need to do is click on the raise your hand button, likely in the participant tab at the bottom of your screen if you're on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. Um, and if you are watching the stream on HowlRound.tv, you can tweet at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Um, and you can also tweet at us at, at PublicTheaterNY or message us in our Instagram. That's all. Awesome sauce like Diana Ross. So here we go. 20 minutes. I don't know if the audio works.
Hey. All right, all right, all right. Zippity yippity. Zippity. Okay. Zip, it's a great, it's a beautiful day in your neighborhood. Mm. Okay. Um, all right. I actually don't see any hands. No. Yet. My favorite part. <laughs> oh, did that change? Um, mm. Yes. Matthew. All right, Matthew. All right. Go for it, Matthew. Hello. 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 Uh, first off, thanks so much for holding this space. I uh, am grateful for it. Um, so I've written down my questions so I don't ramble, so I'm clear. Um, lately, with what I've been writing, I've been feeling uh, very unmotivated, but I know the idea and the concept that I want to put on the page is worthwhile, and I have a lot of passion for that idea. Um, and I think I've been, I've been reflecting on why I've been feeling unmotivated and I think it's been because the characters I've been writing uh, for on behalf of I I don't I don't have that lived experience that they experience so I'm having a uh, a harder time feeling motivated to to um, write their voices because uh, of that yeah so I was just wondering um like how how do I work through those those feelings and uh, of feeling unmotivated to try to um, write their experiences. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Great question, Matthew. Um, so, um, uh, how how far are you removed from these characters? You said you haven't lived their lived experiences. Are they like? Are they your? Could they? Could they be? I mean, they're fictional, I know, but could they be yeah. your? You know, how, are you once or twice removed? How much skin do you have in the game? Um zero like zero like they're not they're not family but but it's a it's a screenplay about allyship and because i'm in vancouver uh, canada um oh, cool. the unceded coast Salish territories the beginning of the year as as maybe some of you know we had uh, the west suetan people uh, we had a lot of uh, actions going on and barricades going on and so right. this screenplay was just um ex like looking into my role as an ally with the uh, West Suetan people and the Coast Salish people in our mm -hmm. lands through a, through a comic book eye, through a character that's from a comic book. So, so yeah, so I was trying to mesh these, these politics and this imaginative, imaginary world together. So um, does that answer your question? No, Maybe but I, think, I feel like you have more, more skin in the game than you're, you know, it sounds like yeah, you're, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. Um, because, I mean, we have to, we, when we're writing about people who we say are not like us, I mean, or, you know, right? I mean, what you said, I, I don't know, but you said, you know, they're at a distance from, then we really have to be mindful of uh, harvesting a community. Right. Right. So not saying that that's what you're doing, but it sounds yeah. like that's something that's kind of coming up. And we just have to be mindful of how much, how much are we harvesting and how much are we helping? right you know um and and how much are we giving back you know um some communities are continually harvested over harvested by people who have uh no skin this is not you matthew but no skin yeah. in the game and and only uh they're they're the only skin in the game is they say i have a right to harvest because well, not in your case, you're in Canada, but this is America. We hear that, I hear that a lot. This is America, we're all in the melting pot and I have a right to harvest. And I'm like, whoa, right. you know? Um, but I think you have to, you have to really um, find the points of contact, find the points in common. And you know, just find how, just, just examine those places where you are close, where you are related to them to them i'm using them you know us and them it's not us and them but if you're saying these are these are not my people um then uh find places where they could be find places where there are some characters included in the in the piece that who are your people whoever mm -hmm. your people are you know mm -hmm. what i mean but again we don't want the kind of thing where their story is a backdrop for for your characters you know yeah. really, really yeah. uh get him get embedded with the story yeah yeah and yeah. and I, I i hear absolutely 
what you're saying. And there is obviously that fear of over harvesting. And um, the the lead character is is of now in my imagination visibly white or or uh, white fully. And so it's also like I'm trying to um, feed in my lived experience of being an ally and and feeling that shame and guilt of 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 failing as an ally but like Mm -hmm. leaning into it and learning from it and not not asking those you're being an ally to to educate you and so that's really where um that's the yeah so one of the characters you would say is closer to you than some of the other folks yes yes okay okay. yeah then that's i mean that's a good place to start um it can be a, a learning experience for the characters like you but also again, be mindful that you don't want the other characters who are not like you to serve as just, yes, you know, totally. so like, you know, the Mississippi, but who are just here is, yes. you know, I love it when yes. the, the white singer is in front and then he's got the, the yeah. 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 The yeah. Back, making it relevant, you know, I yeah, mean, absolutely. Kind of, you know, we've, 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 we played that card in this game and it's time for us to get a new deck. Yeah, but absolutely. That sounds, that sounds like you're on your way to doing that. And just asking the question, just having the conversation um, is a is a wonderful way to start. I think you you know take steps in that keeps taking steps in that direction. Because we all write characters, you know. I mean, you know, you ever heard of the singer songwriter John Prine? He passed away a couple of maybe. No, I haven't. No. Okay, he wrote, he he's a man. Uh, yeah. Um, cisgendered dude. He was like in his seventies when he passed, and he wrote a song called wrote a lot of great songs. One is called Angel from Montgomery, and it starts out. I'm an old woman uh, named after my mother and people like, yo, what? How'd you write that? You know? Right, right. Well, well, he said, well, no one ever told me that I couldn't. Um, Granted, it's different, very different circumstances. And his, that was a while ago and his days aren't these, but just be mindful. You have to bring, I think when you write from your basic personal, you bring a certain amount of respect. When you write for, for people who are not, easily identified as you you have mm-hmm. to bring mad respect like truckloads mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know what i mean uh, and Absolutely. that is the burden you have to bear to bring to the project you have to bear that and bring it to the project right you know? right okay yeah. well, thanks thanks for for bringing up that question great question yeah thanks so much yeah. thank you thank you thank you matthew Bye. um all right up next we've got you laundry are you there hey. oh yes hi hello hey, hi hey man Thank you for doing this. Um, I'm not talking to you. Yeah. Where are you? Oh, wait, I'm still. Oh, no, no. Um, hi. My question is about uh, revision. Um, you know, you hear people, I hear people, I think Tony Kushner said the other day, um, it's, you, it's done when it's done, right? Yeah. But for the less seasoned uh, among us, like myself, you know, how do you know um, what, what, You've got a thing, but what needs to be said absolutely, which is something I'm interested in, mm-hmm. and and also what needs to be um, kept or what should be revealed at what time, um, mm-hmm. and it's not. And my and my question is not. It's not about triggers or anything like that. Like I'm all for that, but I there's there's just I want it to be necessary, and I and if, if revision is our praxis, then how do you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I love when Tony talked about revision because I'm gonna tell on him. You know, Tony Tony loved to rewrite his stuff, man. My brother, my brother Tony Kushner loved to be rewriting. He famous, he famous <laughs> for like, ah, it needs another rewrite. He's amazing uh, that way, and and brave, and has a courage uh, that way. Um, and I uh, I display the courage in saying you know, catch and release like that. So that I have the courage in a different kind of way. Um, I, 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 ha- I do this exercise just for fun. This is just a fun thing. So when you were writing Jalandre, right? You were in the, do you like, um, just pick one or the other, uh, 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 forest or a jungle environment, like the Amazon or, or a, for a pine forest? Which one do you prefer? A jungle. Uh-oh. Jungle. Okay, great. Like Amazon. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Now, okay. So great. So there you are sitting in something like like the Amazon, right, or a beautiful jungle of your own imagining. That is your writing space. Anything goes. Everything grows. Right. 
So just let it flow. When you are writing, let it flow, okay? If you wanna do speed writing, if you wanna write a certain number of pages a day, it's all good. Vomit writing, I sometimes call it, get it out there, right? Buddha, 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 okay? Now, when you reach a point where like, <coughs> like you're retching, <coughs> okay, I think I got it all out, all right? Or I, I said I'd write 20 pages and I did, or I said I'd write, I'd vomit write for a week and I did. Okay, you reach a point of stopping and that can be measured by how many pages you say you're gonna write some kind of first draft, vomit draft deadline, okay? Like that, okay? So you reached a, a point of, got my, first, got my sort of vomit draft out there. Now you're gonna start rewriting, right? Different kind of courage. They're both courageous, different kind of courage, different kind of set of muscles. Now we employ, uh, what's your, okay, a black, uh, here's a, some colors to choose from. Uh, black, gray, white, brown spotted black black okay great so you are on Jalandra. you are now riding a beautiful black horse right okay and what's your favorite song just any song right now just off the top of your head call tyrone okay call tyrone okay great so you call tyrone is playing like really loud it's like filling the every inch of air around you you were on this beautiful black horse and you have in your hand which hand is your dominant hand right or left right right okay you have in your right writing hand a sword of discrimination which as we know is not the sword of like you know discrimination racial discrimination it's the sort of what right. is and what ain't you got the sort of what is and what ain't and you are going through jalandra as your favorite song is playing and you are cutting everything that don't need to be there with the assurance that it will fall to the ground in the fertile earth and if it needs to grow up and be something else spirit will take care of that mm. so you're not going to lose it you know what i mean you're just cutting right you're just cutting okay it's joyous it's a beautiful exercise you're swinging that sword you're riding that horse you're beautiful going across the landscape okay so you do this over and over. Then you read your work. Like, what do I need in here? I don't need that. Don't be afraid of cutting something. You drop it into the fertile earth of your imagination. It will take root and grow into something else if it should do that. Okay? Okay? I am fond of, how do you know when you're done? I am fond of setting some kind of uh, finish line. Like, if I told you, Hey, Jalandra, well, uh, current uh, recent historical events aside, if I told you, hey, brother, go out and, and run, right? Just run around the block, right? Like 10 years later, you'd be like, sis, can I quit? If I say, hey, brother, go out and run a marathon, you know, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so mm -hmm. we set some kind of a finish line. I'm gonna mm -hmm. work on this for two weeks. Then I'm gonna show it to a trusted friend. You see what I mean? That's, you just decided on a done point. You see what I'm saying? Yes, it's yes. Attracted. And then and then after I showed your trusted friend, I get her notes. And then I'm gonna work on it for an, two weeks or more, doing that same thing, the same practice, that same practice of rewriting. And I'm going to show it to a couple of other trusted friends. And you repeat that process, okay? Okay. If it's a play or a screenplay or a teleplay, the pro done is, you know, like I'm working on Genius Aretha. Done is when we shoot it and not even then because we got post and we edit in post. Mm -hmm. Right? We edit in and rewrite in lines and do all kinds of stuff. So done is, I guess, when they had the air date. You know? Right. Um, if it's a play, you rewrite in rehearsal. I tend to uh, rewrite when I'm in the first rehearsal, you know, for the world premiere. After that, I let it go like a child. He's grown. He go to college. Bye. Or he go out and get a job. Bye. You know, that's a long answer. I hope it, I hope it kind of answers your question. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, SLP. Thank you, Andre. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Um, all right. Up next, uh, we've got Devin. Devin, go for it. Hi there. Hey, Devin. Good to see you again. Good to be here. Um, I'm in LA and I'm not too far from the mayor's house. So there are choppers overhead all day long. Right on. It's really fun. Um, I, so by the way, that last response was 
just like so transporting. Thank you so much for that. Um, so I have a question which has to do with a later stage of writing, uh, writing a play, which is in the rehearsal room. So, you know, if I'm lucky to get in the rehearsal room, um, but one is not always lucky in terms of who else is in the room. <laughs> so my question is like, how do you, um, how do you continue to serve the words and the project and the play and your own vision when there are other people in the room, say a director, who um, who doesn't always see eye to eye with you, and um, or who doesn't uh, anyway, or there's no time, or there's some circumstance that prevents like a pure communication between you and a director, and so you're like stuck. <laughs> like, how do you negotiate that? I'm wondering. Yeah, that's that's very difficult, um, and and sometimes painful when you have done all this work, you know, I mean, the page was blank and then you came and created this beautiful work and you bring it to a rehearsal process and you don't quite jive. So your example is with the director, you know, um, that, that's tricky. Um, it's a play you said you're talking about? Yeah. Um, I would say you continue to assert yourself inappropriate ways you know you know um uh what you're doing every time you assert yourself is you say you're saying can you can you listen can you hear me you know what i mean and yep. you kind of try to take a look at what the way the things that are you that you are doing that might create a difficulty in the relationship but sometimes it's just a director who doesn't want to listen to you, who comes in with all of their own ideas, you know, and has a certain take on it and doesn't really uh, appreciate your take on it as much as you'd like them to, you know? Uh, yeah. the, great thing about, the great thing about it is that with a play is that you can do it once, you can do it again. You know, screenplays are a little trickier because when, when they're shot, you know, it's very hard for the writer to get in there and, you know, once you shoot it, it's kind of the way it is. Um, you, you know what I mean? So I would say continue to assert yourself and know that some collaborations are not great. You know, but don't, I would say, you know, don't give up. I'm not coming to rehearsal because I'm not being listened to. That's, that's not an option, right? That's not, that's not something you, you want to do. You want to continue to be there, continue to be there. I, in my personal experience, I, one thing I do not do is I don't then go around and start talking to the actors. I don't do that. Some writers do. I don't. That's not part of my uh, toolkit. You know, I learn from the experience. I take notes. I take names. You know what I mean? So... So for example, I had a great, uh, last show I did at the public theater, I had a great working relationship with Oscar Eustace. We, we had a ball and a blast and he was very respectful, kind, considerate. The actors loved him, you know, everybody, you know, we all worked together, we worked hard. It was hard, hard play, white noise. Um, but he remembered those things and wow, great guy to collaborate with, really respected me, respected the play. You know, we had a great time. Um, it hasn't always been like that. Take names. And this is your craft. This is your career. You're going to learn. You're learning, right? And know that you have a squad here. <laughs> okay? It happens. It happens. Great collaborations happen and not so great ones happen too. And Thank keep so going. Much. Yeah, sorry. Don't let it, you know, let it, let it motivate you. Use shit for fuel. Let it motivate you to your next experience. Don't let it stop you. Ain't nobody going to turn me around, right? Thank you. Thank well, you. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thanks. Thank you, Tiffin. Um, all right, up next we have Leon. So, uh, are you there? I think I'm. Hi. Hi, I'm unmuted. I'm surprised. I'm, um, it's thank magic. you for. Uh, I'm, I'm a uh, wandering person who happened to notice this on the internet and wanted to just want, um, get some advice if possible. I'm, I'm working on a Zoom play and I'm not sure how to proceed from having it crystallized to having it seen. I don't, 
don't know what to do. I've, uh, this is my the second play I've, I've written, uh, and I haven't had any of them produced, but uh, I decided I might as well give it a try. And as they uh, the quote the president, what have I got to do? <laughs> so, yeah. so, yeah, I will go back. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. So you're so you're writing a Zoom play, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And I'm not sure what to what to do. How to you know how to do it and how to get how to get it uh, considered seen. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, uh -huh. Go go away. Sorry. I, uh, child. I've seen the, uh, the the play that the the public. Uh, you know what what can we talk about the the. Yeah. Yeah. Used to play. I, uh -huh. I saw that, and it was uh -huh. it was great. And that, that pretty much uh, sort of inspired me to do it myself. So I, you know, late nights, early mornings, and uh -huh. uh, have something that I think will be. Uh, well, you know, I, I'm I won't be too embarrassed. Uh huh. Well, uh, I I think this platform is really great for doing for doing plays. Um, I think what I suggest always to everybody, no matter how many plays or novels or screenplays or whatever they've written is to finish your draft. So how, how close are you to finishing your draft, Leon? Uh, well, in terms of time, depends on how driven I am. I guess I can do it in a, in a week. Um, mm -hmm. where I really just, you know, focus uh -huh. on it and do, uh, you know. uh -huh. okay. So you, you, you're going to work every day. I mean, how close meaning, you know, are you, you know, you say, say you've got like 30 pages to, to write before you're done. This is just make up a number. Um, what you want to do is you want to keep showing up at your writing practice, right? Um, get it done. And then think of people in, in your community. I mean, what's great, what, what could be really fun is to, if you have a, 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 like a playwriting community or a group of people, you know, are writers, it would be fun to have a zoom call where, you pass it out and allow people to read it. That could be really fun. Um, I, I mean, or, or even friends. They don't have to be professionals. You know, they could be just friends who who want to have a good time. That would be great. Yeah, because I don't. Yeah, because I, I don't have a community, but I do. Uh, I have a friend or two. <laughs> you seem like you would have friends. No, really. So you get some friends and you make it a little party. You know, like a potluck, and you kind of have your friends read it, and then you could have a discussion afterwards. Um, that's a really fun way to, to not only get your work heard, but sort of make public, make public your efforts, which is often, you know, if they're good friends are going to cheer you on. Um, and it's really super easy to set up. I think people would enjoy it, you know, better than watching something ready made on. Yeah. yeah. Right? Thank you. That's good. Yeah, I, I will. Uh, I'll do that. Uh, they, they are patient people. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Leon. I'm a little much. Um, all right, we actually don't have any questions at the moment. Oh, we got one. Lou? Hi. Hi. Hey, Lou. Um, hi, nice to be here with you. I've been here the last four weeks. Oh, right on, girl. And almost every day and it has changed my brain chemistry. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to make this as quick as possible, but I just want to give a little background to let you know, um, my creative life really came to fruition in the advertising business where it was my job to channel the voices of other creative famous people. I worked in entertainment marketing, but also brands. And once I even did a commercial where Michael Jordan voiced, something I wrote. So if you Google him, it's something I wrote is credited to him. So <laughs> it's been a long road where it's been my job to be invisible um, and channel creativity for commerce. And the last two years I took a break from that and it's taken me about two years to get here in your space where this all makes sense. But I still struggle with um, finding my voice, which I've been much better at. And a lot of credit to this group and to you. Um, but my question is, where does the line uh, between making art for art's sake and moving people to some kind of action or belief, where, where does it 
stop and start. And I think because of my background and why I bring it up is I still am always thinking about making people feel certain things or leaving them with some kind of action or feeling. And I think art can have a place in that space. Um, but for me, it's been like over ramped. <laughs> and so I've had to back it up a lot. And I don't know, I guess I'm just thinking a lot about the purpose of art and story to leave people with a feeling or um, an action and what it means. And so I just wanted to put that question, like how it's meant, if it has it's played a part in what you've made or if you just sort of make things and kiss it up to the powers. I love, I love, oops, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. Oh, no, I, I just, I'm just, wow. Your, 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 your writer's journey is so cool. It's so, it's so cool um, to have, you're sort of like in the belly of the beast, you know, that's where you, you've been writing from the belly of the beast. And now that you're out of the, the beast's belly, it's like, okay. The things I've seen, you can't unsee. Right, right, <laughs> and, right, right, right. And now you're, you're a writer, but you're sort of out there, you know, swimming on your own, um, or not on your own with your, with your whole writer's community. But um, what's a, what a great question, Lou. It's, it, and it's great. You, yeah, you've been right for many years. You've written things that, you know, to make people feel a certain thing. I would, uh, in, in my, I mean, to me, writing or art makes, would, it would, it's great when it encourages people to feel something, not a certain thing. I mean, this, and this is where I maybe differ from some of my colleagues. Um, uh, some of these market, you know, sometimes they say, Oh, what do you want people to leave the theater with? You know, I'm like, gee, um, uh, a sick feeling in their stomach. <laughs> you know, anyway. uh, wow, a feeling like, oh, gee, I have to, I have to talk to my friends now, and I haven't been talking to my friends for a long. You know, that kind of. I mean, you know, I have to hug my brother. You know, you know. Um, but all those things are valid. You think of, I think, when I think of, let's just take plays. When I think of King Lear. What is we're supposed? What are we supposed to think when we, right? Um, oftentimes, some products, some pieces of art, move us to buy things, make us feel a certain way that then will have us purchase certain things, which I think is a form of uh, is criminal, basically. Right. You know, to use art for like, yeah, we're gonna get them. You know. Um, but uh, I often think of when I think of stories, whether they be songs or, or my son who just got a new sweatshirt and he wants me Hi. to see it. Okay, go back to your room or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I think of uh, stories or songs or plays or movies or teleplays or whatever. I think of um, uh, Ariadne, right? So. There was this, anyway, for those of you who don't know her deal, there was this minotaur, long story about him, how he got there, but he was kind of dangerous, you know? So they built a maze for him and they put him in the maze so he wouldn't hurt people. And then they started sending people into the maze to get eaten or whatever. And Ariadne had this ball of yarn. I love poetry, a yarn. So she had, she had a ball of yarn. She had a yarn that helped her chosen one navigate the maze and to me that's why I write things I make yarn to help my people all kinds of people navigate the maze so I'm like Ariadne hanging out it doesn't mean I don't like the minotaur actually I probably am the minotaur but anyway that's another story um, James Baldwin said I figured at one point I decided to become a writer and I decided that I would save my people that way so it has, it is a holy art, it is a holy calling, you know, uh, that can be used to get people to buy things or, you know, you know what I mean? Uh, and now that you're free, you know, now you can pick up the sword that's yours. You were just using a little butter knife in there, don't worry. Now you have a sword and it's really sharp now and you know how to swing it, right? 
I know. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Lou. Um, all right, we've got a little less than 10 minutes left and we're gonna go to Crystal. Uh, Crystal, are you there? Yeah, I am here. Hi. Well, How you doing, girl? How's New Jersey? It's still New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> but we are going to protest. My daughter and my son and I are going to protest in our town on Sunday. So we're excited. Very about good. Very good. During, during daylight hours. Yes. Daylight. Yes. Of yes, ma'am. All right. There you go. Good. I had, actually, I wanted to share a real quick quote before my question. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Um, so on Monday, I did this thing where um, on Instagram Live, um, I read a, an excerpt from um, the the fire next time. And um, but my friend sent me this quote from Mr. Baldwin, and it goes, "The role of the artist is exactly the same as the role of the lover. If I love you, I have to make you conscious of the things you don't see." And I was just like, it just kind of just landed heavy on my heart and kind of was like, okay, now I understand why I'm writing again. Okay, 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 we can get back to it. We can get back to it. Um, so I just wanted to, I wanted to share that before my question. Um, my question is, um, so, you know, I've, I've been balancing the two projects, um, the personal project, the demagogue project and my personal Father Chronicles project. And the Father Chronicles, I'm like 22 pages in, um, but I've literally like run out of material to write, like what to write, but I know I'm not done. I'm, I feel like I'm very far from being done. And I, but I don't have, I don't have anything else. Like I've, I feel like I've emptied out, but I know that there's more that needs to come out. It's just that I don't know what to put on the paper anymore um, to, to contribute to, to that, to, to make it not, it's not really about making it longer, but making it fuller and, and, and getting all of it out because it's partially emotional and partially spiritual for me to finish it like in a complete way that finish that I'm finished too. If, does that make sense? Like it's more than just writing a play to present to my friends. It's more about this is what is my catharsis it's what I need I need this to to get through the process of grieving and get through the process of mourning and get through the process of all these complicated confusing layers of questions and doubts and all sorts of things like I, ha I have to I have to finish it but I ha I'm not finished but I don't know what to do I don't, I don't know what else to write it's a beautiful question. And your father passed recently, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember. Okay. So do you, have you printed out the pages? You've, you've typed them up and do you have the pages so far that you've printed? Have I you didn't print them out yet. Okay. Uh, have you typed them up? Uh-huh. Great. Okay. So here's just a little exercise. Um, we're going we're gonna to call it showing up and being patient. Okay, so you're gonna okay. print out the pages. Okay, do you have any folders? Not to say you gotta to go to Staples or anything. I mean, Staples for me is right right down the street, but do you have any spare folder or that, that kind of looks nice or something, you know? Yeah, I'm yeah, sure I do. You have something nice or a piece of ribbon, you know, that you could tie around the pages, put in a folder. I could find something. Oh, kind of like that. So you're gonna make a little, you're gonna, you're gonna acknowledge the gift. So you're gonna print out the pages, put them in a folder, Tie them up nicely with a bow, okay? Put them in a place, do you have a desk or a, a, a place kind of that's your own? I mean, I kind of have an area on the dining room table. Do you have kind of like an area? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. You're gonna put them in a place of prominence, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily you have another project to work on, right? Okay. Yeah. So, so every day you sit down to work on your other project, you sit down, you can, you can put your hand gently on your on your printed out page and folder with the with the ribbon and say, "I love you. I'm here. Come when you can." Right? I'm showing up. I'm showing up for you. Talk to me when you can. I'm listening. 
Okay, then you can go about either working on your, your other project or you can journal if you want about whatever. Okay, but basically you want to be grateful for, yeah, you want to be grateful for what you've accomplished already. So we're not going to go, gee, it's only such and such pages. It should be more bad, Crystal, bad. You know what I mean? You're not doing the work. No, 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 no. You're saying, I've, I've gone as far as I can right now, but I'm, I'm respecting what I've done. And I'm saying, I'm right here. I'm showing up every day. Talk to me when you can. Call when you can. I'm right here. Okay. 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 Yeah. And and it'll 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 show up in little bits maybe. And if you hear a little bit, you can write it down and type it up and add to it. You know what I'm saying? You know, right now again, you're like Jalandra. You're in the garden of anything goes. Anything goes. Everything grows. You know what I mean? So so you're in that place where you're writing. Okay. So any you can, might you might think of a, a, a sentence. Write it down, type it up, write it down, flip it in the, in the folder or type it up in the document. Okay. And it'll come. It'll, 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 it'll show up for you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you always ask such beautiful questions, Crystal. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Crystal. Okay. All right, um, we have about 45 seconds left. Do you want to take one? Jim has a really quick question, I bet you. Go for it, Jim. Do you? Oh, uh -oh you got to unmute him. You got to unmute him. Are oh, you I there? Uh-oh, he's right here. Hi, oh, there you go. There you are. Yeah, hi. Hey, Thank you so much for this. I've attended every session online. Yeah. I used to come at the mezzanine of the public. The I've been on how round partly because I knew I, my writing was going so well. I didn't really have a question, but I've taken incredible sustenance from what's been going on here. The play I'm writing now is about old people and real estate, and I've been collecting material for, I'm a New Yorker. I've been <laughs> in a rent stabilized apartment. And I have been collecting material for it for a few years. And um, I, the writing has been going fine, but this is my problem. I am writing not a Zoom play, not a teleplay. I'm not writing a film. I am writing a theater play because it's about contested space. Three old people, in a retired home for retired performers and a, a representative of the um, real estate interests that are trying to displace them. And so it has to be in real space. The writing has been going great. It's in seven scenes. I've written all of three scenes, most of two scenes, I hope to have a draft by maybe July the 4th. The problem is every once in a while, in the middle of the night, I say, how can you be writing a play for a space that might never ever be again? The theater with an audience <laughs> and performers in a space because it's the space and, and holding that space that is so important. Does that make any sense? It totally does, Jim. And like you said, you, you often mostly always are on the mezzanine when we're doing it live at the public theater. It's great that you've been part of this incarnation too. I, I say, Jim, it's, it's an act of faith. And I know you are, a man who lives in his faith. And just like these days, we got to believe in this country, right? These days, we, we got to believe in each other to come through. And we got to believe that there is, your place sounds beautiful and I cannot wait to see it. And I know I will hold the space for your play in my heart and my mind. And I think if we all do that for each other, we're gonna hold space for each other. This is what the part of Watch Me Work right now is. We are, we are actively holding space for each other and each other's creative endeavors. 
that's what we're doing and we are encouraging others and there's a lot of power in that out right now gathering in washington square park they are holding space for a better america right now right this is what this is part of the powerful thing that we do and i believe jim that we will one day come back and have theaters and stages and actors live and in the flesh you know while zoom plays are awesome and 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 teleplays and all that stuff is fantastic we will one day come back and have a live you know more traditional theater experience and a delicious theater experience and we will see your play on stage we will and we have to step out on faith faith is the evidence of things unseen right and we we i i believe that we're going to come back i can't wait to see your play i'm thrilled and finish writing it sounds like you haven't finished so finish <laughs> okay thank you okay all right 603 yay it's 603 so we're gonna take friday off like we do in the summer <laughs> yes no nothing not fridays yeah. um but we'll be back next week monday we'll to thursday all the links will be released tomorrow at 3 p.m. Um, Eastern time. Thank you guys for showing up. Thanks, Audrey, for organizing and orchestrating. Thank you. You guys Thank are so you, beautiful. Thank you, SLP. Mm, so beautiful. Thank you. We Bye. love you. We love you.